Hello everyone. Um, in this video, uh, I will illustrate how we can accomplish uh, a very common requirement that I get from my customers, where when you terminate uh, or where when you initiate a termination of an employee in Employee Central, a lot of times I w my customers they <clears throat> have the requirement to uh, check if there are any future dated transactions recorded for that for the employee um, that would should be removed before you you record the termination uh, and the main requirement here is uh, in several instances there are future dated um, leave requests or, or maybe even uh, transfers or, or payments or job changes that were already recorded for that employee that should be uh, removed before you actually go there and terminate that employee. So here in my, in my demo instance, I have <clears throat> an employee, Fate Marshall. And if we look at her employment information here under job information, we can see that there is a future dated job information change that it, when we look at the uh, history in the of the job information we can see that future dated uh, transaction here which is a job change lateral transaction effective as of november uh, 22 and today here is november 11. so now if I just go there directly and record a termination for this employee, the system will not block me for, from doing that. So if I want to terminate that employee tomorrow and select a, a termination reason here and save the termination, the system will not prevent me from doing that. So we can see that the workflow will be submitted and after all the approvals, then this employee will be terminated, even though we have that future data transaction or job change recorded for, for this employee. So what I want to show today is how can we build a business rule that can check if this employee has a future data transaction when we, we try to record the termination meaning a future data transaction is a transaction in the job in their job information that is effective after the effective date of the termination request or the termination record we are submitting in order to achieve this there is a business rule function that we we can use for that and not everyone knows about that because that function only becomes available if you have your that new kind of new functionality named calibration uh, notifications enabled or alerts enabled. So in order to have that business rule available in, in our business rule uh, configuration, we need to make sure that we go in calibration here. Then we have uh, calibration settings, manage calibration settings. And here under global settings, we, may, we need to make sure that we have this option here enabled, enable calibration alert. So this flag here needs to be checked in order for us to be able to use the business rule function we, we're going to use to build this rule. Okay. So now that I have this check enabled, I can go and first thing we need to do is as we want to trigger an error message when the employee has that um, future data event, we need to first create a, a message definition if we don't have one already. So I'm going to go ahead and create here under manage data. Uh, I will create a message. Let's say uh, this employee has a future data transaction please remove it before recording this termination 
of course this is just a sample message you can definitely use something more user friendly and i'm gonna call this message term future date transaction okay okay so now we have our message definition here uh, the next step will be to create the actual um, business rule to check that. So I, I like to do it this way. You, you, can, you could go directly and configure business rules, create there, and then come back here and um, assign it in the, in the succession data model. But I like to do it directly from here. So I will go in the manage business configuration where we can get, uh, get access to our succession data model. And this rule, I'm gonna assign it as a non-save rule under the job information section because job information always get checked when we uh, record a termination or uh, any other transaction pretty much in the related with the job information of the employee. And I'm going to scroll down and this rule will be assigned. I'm going to use the base object job information model. And the rule will be an on save rule. And now I'm going to click on this plus icon here so I can create my business rule. I get this uh, pop up window and then I'm going to create as a basic rule. And the rule name will be termination check future future dated transactions. Okay. I'm going to just leave the proposed or recommended uh, rule ID here. And the base object, as we saw in the previous screen, will be job information model. So now I'm going to check a few conditions before I can actually trigger this message. Uh, first condition I want to check is to make sure that the event that's being triggered is a termination event because I, I don't want to check for future dated transactions, potentially for other types of uh, requests. So first I'm going to check if the event associated, sorry, the event associated with the event reason that's being selected is a termination event. Okay, so I just navigated through the event reason, then the event associated with that event reason, and I'm checking if it's a termination. One other thing is I'm going to add an end condition, and I want to check if the event reason is being updated because I don't want to trigger this rule if you are just updating an existing uh, record that is, uh, is already there. So I'm going to check if the event reason value is different from the event reason previous value here. And then now I'm going to check for the future data transaction. And in order for, for us to do that, there is, if we scroll down here, there is a business rule function that gets activated after we enable that calibration alerts uh, feature. And the business rule function we are looking for is this one here, has job change event for period, okay? So what, what this business rule function does is this business rule function will check for additional job information records uh, from a start and end date that I can select here for the user for specific event reasons. Okay, so in this example, I'm going to trigger these for my current user ID or employee that I'm recording the termination. 
The start date for my validation will be my termination event date because I want to check all the events that are after my termination request. And the end date can be 12, 31, 99, 99. So I can check all transactions to the end of time. And my event reason in this example that I want to check is that job change lateral event reason, which is the one that I have recorded for that employee. And if my condition here is equal yes, meaning that there is a future dated transaction of this type for that employee, then I'm going to trigger that error message that we created in the previous step. And the severity will be, in this case, will be error because I really want to prevent this from happening. I'm going to go ahead and save this business rule. And now I'm going to copy the business rule ID here. I will close this pop up and I'm going to assign this rule here as an unsaved rule. And if you want to be like 100% uh, safe, you could go here in the details and make sure that you are only triggering this rule in the termination UI. So you can change all the others here to no. And maybe also in the history UI, you, you may want to do this validation as well. For the other ones, you may potentially leave it as no. Okay. I will also leave it as in the edit UI via MSS and ESS, just in case we have managers triggering this uh, termination request. And now I'm going to save the job information section. Okay, just a warning. It takes a few seconds to save the data model. Okay, so now what should happen is if I go again in that employee's record in the people profile, Fate Marshall, And again, we can go there and see that in their job information record for her, we do have a job information change effective as of November 22, which is a future date. And if I try to initiate a termination request before that future data transaction, so let's say tomorrow, I did not restrict any event reason or termination reason. We could do that in, in our business rule if we wanted. And then I try to submit that termination. The system will give me that error message here and will not let me to proceed until I remove that future dated transaction. Okay. So if I close here this and I go back and I'm going to remove that future dated let job change, delete it. And if I try to submit the termination again in the same date tomorrow, same termination reason. And if I save, now the system will let me to proceed with the termination request as expected. Okay, so this was just a quick demo of how we can achieve one of the most common requirements I get from customers on how we can validate if an employee has a future dated transaction when you try to submit a termination because this can be really a uh, um, requirement for many integrations with payroll where a terminated employee should not have other transactions after the termination date or even with 
payments or benefits that could be um, could have their systems um, wrongly paying benefits or submitting benefits for employees that were already terminated because they are still getting future data transactions for those employees. So I hope this uh, helps. I think it's a very good way of checking for this requirement. And thanks for watching.